ask you to join me in prayer this morning. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, God, our rock and our redeemer. May you speak to us today as we have gathered to hear your word, to be encouraged, to be challenged, and to be reminded that you love us and you see us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, a woman, a Samaritan woman, comes to to draw water from a well, and as she goes to get the water, she finds that Jesus is resting at the well. Now, you may remember that Jews and Samaritans don't usually get along. In fact, they have been practicing an extreme version of uh, social distancing for a couple of centuries now, and so they don't like each other. They don't get along, and so... Um, Culturally speaking, you also have this moment where this woman comes, comes to get water and Jesus speaks to her. And so culturally speaking, uh, unless they are married or you are related to each other, men and women don't talk to each other in public. So you have this moment when there are all these religious and cultural boundaries being crossed. And you know that this is an interesting and important encounter for the woman and for Jesus. As Jesus begins to talk to her, um, the woman, in the, the Samaritan woman, is very surprised. And um, he begins to talk about this weird stuff, this uh, living water that he can offer, this water that will satisfy your thirst, that can quench your thirst forever. Uh, certainly, the Samaritan woman by now is confused. This is a normal day for her. She's just coming to get water as she normally does every day. And this strange man is talking like now like a prophet. And it's then uh, that in this moment that Jesus invites this woman to call her husband. And uh, when, she tell, when she tells him that she has no husband, Jesus reveals something that not everybody knows. You have had five husbands, and the one you have is not, now is not your husband. Now, let me just also be clear. We don't know anything about this Samaritan woman except what Jesus is telling us. Now, to be fair, there are many ways, many combinations, many possibilities of how this woman got to this point of having five husbands. Uh, maybe she had been a widow for four, four times. Maybe she had been divorced a couple of times. Maybe her, one of her husbands left her. Maybe she remarried a couple of times. She could be abandoned. Um, or she could be fulfilling this uh, Jewish practice of the leveret marriage, where a widow, um, childless woman, is given to her deceased husband's brother so that they can have a child. And I can keep going on. We don't really know how this one got to this point. But what we know, what it's important right now, is that Jesus knew her story. Jesus knew who she was. Jesus knew how she arrived to this point. She knew how her heart had been broken so many times, how she had endured suffering. She knew everything about her. And here's the beautiful thing that happened next in this encounter. We don't get a sense that this woman was offended. I think that for once in her life, this woman feels fully seen, fully known, and that she's not alone in her brokenness and suffering. Jesus, instead of um, offering her a lesson in morality or judgment, he offers her compassion. He speaks with her and offer her, offers her something that is of much value. He says, I have the living water that you're looking for. Jesus knows and sees the brokenness of this woman, but Jesus also sees our brokenness. Those things, those moments, those decisions that we like to pretend that they don't, they don't exist, those things, those decisions, those moments, those mistakes that we like to hide. But what Jesus is teaching us today is that we shouldn't, we shouldn't hide those moments or we shouldn't pretend they don't exist because it is really in our brokenness, that we are connected to each other. This is actually what brings us all together, that we are not perfect. We are, our brokenness is actually the place 
where we all can come together and ask for help. That's what actually brings us together. The fact that we're not perfect, that the fact that we are a work in progress, that we need help, that we need each other. And that is exactly the place where we all are even today. I remember when 2019 ended and I said to myself, I cannot wait for 2020 to begin to be a better year. But now it seems that 2020 will be forever shaped uh, by the uncertainty of this coronavirus that is touching all of us. But perhaps as we are facing this challenging time, this is also an opportunity for all of us to face this particular brokenness that we're sharing together. Perhaps our collective brokenness that is keeping us separated from each other can bring us together. This collective brokenness where we are trying to figure out how to live life will invite us to connect, to be with each other, to reach out, to show others that we truly care for them, that we truly are part of this same world. Maybe um, this is a moment, this is an invitation, this brokenness to reach out with compassion, with support, with prayer, with service, with words, so that we may become neighbors to each other again, like we used to be. Maybe this is a time when we realize that we are seen by God and that we see each other and that we can be there for each other. Maybe this is also a time where God is inviting us, just like Jesus did, to cross all the cultural or religious boundaries or social boundaries that we have created with our neighbors so that we might be able to reach out with, to them and extend grace, extend prayer, support, and companionship. The late uh, Canadian singer Leonard Cohen uh, has a beautiful, he wrote many beautiful songs, but one of them uh, uh, is from a song called Anthem. He has this beautiful line in it. And I think that I have shared this be with you before. It says, there is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. The collective, the collective crack and brokenness that we all have is inviting us to let the light of Christ in. And as we let the light in, we then share this love and beauty with each other. This brokenness of the Samaritan woman um, allowed her to receive the light that she needed from Jesus and the compassion that she needed and the life that she needed. So maybe this brokenness that we have may let the light in, open a door in our, in our lives to embrace a new life, to have a new beginning, to have a restart, to have a new and beautiful redemption song that would invite us to to be with each other and support each other. So, so thanks be to God, not because we have the coronavirus around us, but because we now can see each other and support each other and love each other in our brokenness. Amen. So good morning, everyone. Um, it's nice to see you, sort of, like that. Um, but we're going to talk today about the scripture that was read earlier and how the woman was at the well. And Jesus said, bring me a, dr uh, you know, dr give me a drink from the well. And I was thinking about how refreshing this glass of water looks. And how I think everyone would want to drink from the well if this is what the water looked like. But really what he was talking about was if we drink from his, the well that he offers, the water that he offers, that we are drinking so that we, from him, and we get to gain his knowledge, drink in his knowledge, and be closer to God. And that's really what he was talking about. So I think we all want to drink from the well and be closer to God through Jesus by praying. And this is really strange, doing it without children. <laughs> and um, so let's all drink from the well, especially during these difficult times and these unsure times that we're in right now. And don't forget to pray. 
So I also thought that we would talk about what is going on out here because it's kind of scary. So now we're going to talk about what is going on in this chaotic world at this time. Um, and we're going to do it like this. Here are people. These eggs represent people. Um, they're ready for the Easter egg hunt. So we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. It just might be in May. But we will have the Easter egg hunt, I promise. So here are people. And someone comes home and they're sick. They might not even know they're sick. So they come home and suddenly they are sick and their children are sick. And their children go to school sick. And all then suddenly these children become sick. And they take it home and their parents become sick. Their parents go to work and they pass it on and other people can become sick. So Governor Hogan said, you know what? That's a lot of people getting sick really fast. So let's slow it down. Let's let our precious children stay at home. No more school. Woo! No more school. We're going to keep them home from school. Well, that's still a lot of people, see, that are going out. It's too many. So then he said, let's keep our parents, our special parents, home from work. Stay home. Stay home with your children. Learn online. So then he said, you know what? We don't want it to come, we don't want this to spread real, real, real fast. So we still have some other people that can stay at home. We have some retail workers that can stay at home, right? We have, who else can stay at home? Restaurants need to be closed because people like to gather. So we're going to close restaurants. We are going to close fitness gyms, every place that is not essential. They use that word a lot, essential. So the essential things are the grocery stores and our hospitals, of course, and our police are there and, the, and our paramedics, fire. Those are essential things that must remain open. But everyone else needs to be at home, right? So that you are not sharing those germs, right? So now everything's going to slow down. And that's what we're trying to do by staying at home. And I know it's no fun to stay at home. Uh, we've been home a week. And I can tell you I've read. I've cleaned out my closet. I have talked to friends on the phone. It's not, no fun. It's getting to be no fun. But these are things you can do when you're at home. You can read. You can play games. Bring out those board games. Those are lots of fun. And you don't get to play them very often. You have a lot of time to relax and to reconnect with maybe your siblings in a kind way. And that is the important thing, is in a kind way. Everybody is pretty stressed right now, your moms and dads, you, you're stressed, because you're not sure what's going to happen. But you have to have faith that it will, it will be over. We will go back to school, and we will. We will go back to school, and we will go back to being able to go to our, a restaurant with people, We'll be able to hug our friends again because I am missing our hugs and I can't wait to see everyone in person and it will happen. It may be a while, maybe a couple more weeks, but it will happen and things will get back to normal. Maybe a kinder normal because we'll be so excited to see each other again. So when we get back to church, I think we're going to need a party. And if you're going to have a party, you need cake or it's a meeting. So I think we'll have a party when we get back to church. And we will all come together and we'll be thankful. So I would like to challenge you to each day when you're home, find something you are grateful for or somewhere that you've seen God. The weather has been absolutely gorgeous. I see God in that sun shining. So somewhere you can see God. So I challenge you every day to look for something where
where God is or where you're something you're grateful for. And we're going to remember to wash your hands. And they say you can do the ABCs. That's how long you should wash your hands. But also you can say the Lord's Prayer. So it's good to pray. And that you can do all the time. Don't forget to pray and ask God to give you the courage, to give you a calmness and a peacefulness that I think we all need in these times. You can't hug other people, but you can hug your mom and dad. You can hug your brothers and sisters. And you can talk to people. So don't forget to reach out. If, if you're feeling really stressful or really confused, reach out to your mom and dad and ask questions. Or you can call us or email me. Your mom and dad might have to email me. But you are welcome to call us. We are here. And we don't want you to feel like you're alone because sometimes it feels like you're alone when you've been in your house for so long. So reach out to us and we are here for you. And remember, to keep, keep your social distancing, but not to your family. If they're in your house, you don't have to keep a distance from them. You might want to by the end, but you don't have to. So this was just something that I found that I thought was sort of appropriate for this. In Isaiah 41.10 says, Don't panic. I am with you. There's no need to fear, for I am your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. Keep a firm grip on you. And don't forget that God will do that. Thank you. And I can't wait to see you all in person again. Big hugs for everyone when we do. Bye.